Hey everybody, what's going on? Coming to you from a slightly different venue today to talk about the Yensa Color and Face Skin on Skin BC Full Coverage Foundation. I had some very mixed thoughts about this product. So first of all, a BB plus a CC, we're talking about a beauty balm plus color corrector full coverage foundation with SPF 40 sunscreen. And just going on the packaging alone, it reminded me very much of another product that I had tried in the past and admittedly didn't care for too much. So I did do the full foundation wear test for this, which I have pre-filmed. We're gonna walk through that here in just a second. For those who are new here, when I do these wear tests, we're looking for a couple of things. I'm looking at the consistency of the product. How thick is it? I'm looking at its wearability in terms of longevity. How long does it hold up on the skin? I'm looking at range of coverage, which is gonna be um, sheer all the way to full coverage foundation. And then I look at some things on the market that I could compare it to and let you know which one I prefer. So here up close and personal is the product. I purchased mine in the shade Light Neutral and I was actually pretty okay with that. You'll take a look at that in a second. Consistency. It is a lot thinner than I thought it was going to be. Very light, very liquidy. You could see it running down the back of my hand there. Given the consistency, I decided to go in with a brush for application. It's blending out really nicely. Immediate thoughts when I put it on my skin were that it felt very light. It didn't feel like there was much there um, in terms of weight, in terms of thickness. Comparable products, which I will talk about later on, um, much thicker, much cakier on my face. So I was really pleased to see that. I did try to blend out a few spots with my fingers. I really do recommend the brush here though. Um, fingers, I just felt like moved it around and sort of lifted it off the skin too much. So coverage, I would call this a medium to full coverage foundation. And I say medium to full because I can still see some of my redness there. I can still see some of the veins there around my jawline. When I get into really full coverage products, those are completely concealed. I can't see them at all. So medium to full coverage, blended out really nicely. Um, the color I think is actually pretty good for my skin. Um, I do have some sunless tanner on, so it's looking a little bit lighter than what I have going on on my neck, but overall pretty good color match. So you guys know what I have going on the rest of my face for the day. I am setting this with a Beauty Blender Bounce Powder, and I'm going in with the face powders from that Fora Scope palette that I reviewed for you guys recently. A little blush, a little bronzer, little bit of highlight, um, just to give me a look for the rest of the day, because I had some things going on. And there's our first timestamp at 7.50 a.m. So I came back at 10.50, so three hours later, I've got my eye makeup on as well. You can see pretty immediately here, Shine City, right? So I'm gonna go in with my oil blot like I usually do, the T-zone on one side of that, and then um, my cheeks on the other end of it, rather than side. So you'll be able to see here exactly how much oil comes off. A lot is the answer. Um, but what I was pleased about was, it didn't really seem to remove the makeup with it. The, the look here now I still feel like looks pretty fresh, um, still pretty freshly applied. Maybe a little bit of accentuation on my pores there on my cheek, but overall I felt still looking pretty good. The coverage on the chin has stayed so that redness on my chin isn't coming through yet. So for three hours, oily skin, good check-in. So our next check-in is around two o'clock, three hours later, and still, again, very shiny. Um, so that oil blot only lasted for so long, and this product just is not really holding up to my skin's level of oil production. So here's an up-close look at it. You can kind of see that, pot, that spot where, that I referenced earlier where I have the larger pores and the fine lines around my cheek and my mouth there. It is starting to look a little bit settled. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's turning into that cake face appearance, but it definitely isn't looking as fresh at this point. And the coverage is still doing so-so. I had a lot of shine on the forehead there. My chin is starting to look a little red, but overall okay. So this time I decided to do two things. I'm going in with the oil blot first, but I'm also gonna use a different powder to kind of powder up those shinier spots on my face and see how that supports me until the next check-in. So mostly in the T-zone, this is the Dior Powder No Powder from their backstage line. Um, for those who are interested, I can link that below for you guys with the other products from this video. So I came back at four o'clock just two hours later because I had to leave the house for a while and I wanted to let you know where we were at. So 
that spot in my forehead and on my cheeks still just shiny. Usually when I do these wear tests for you guys, I only blot my face once, maybe twice. So this is just not really doing it for me. Same issues here. You can see I'm starting to lose some coverage on the chin there. It's really just not holding up on my cheeks. And I feel like my skin just doesn't look as good with this product as other foundations that are billed as full coverage. So before I left the house, I went in with that oil blot one more time, and that is what I was able to get off of my face. So when I came home at 7.30, this is our last checkpoint. Hair is up on the head at this point. From far away, I'm smiling, I'm showing you guys. I don't think it looks horrendous, but again, up close, you can just see now those veins there at the bottom portion of my cheek. The redness on my cheek is coming through. I really just feel like the coverage is pretty much lost. The, the oil production in my skin has really deteriorated the product at this point. Um, the one nice thing about it, I will say, is unlike heavier foundations, you've seen me doing these wear tests where you have that sensation of like being able to wipe it with a finger off of your face, like you're touching your cheek and it's coming away on your fingertip. I didn't have that sensation with this because it's a much lighter product, but up close and personal, the coverage at the, what would that be? Um, almost 12 hour mark really not that great. In fairness, this product is not billed as a 12 hour foundation, a 16 hour foundation. It's just billed as a healthy ingredient BB plus CC full coverage foundation. I really like the ingredient list on this. On the side of the box here, they give you um, what they call their eight super blocks essence. So they've got some really good proprietary stuff going on here. Um, it is a cruelty-free brand with a lot of other stuff that they don't include, including par parabens, sulfates, mineral oil, etc. So I do think this is, again, an example of some of what we're seeing in the cleaner beauty market or clean beauty market. Um, so I think all of that was really, really great. Where this falls apart for me is just the oily skin factor. I know a lot of you watch my channel because I have oily skin and you do too and you want to know what's going to work, what's going to hold up. So I would say a couple of things. This is just not your full day foundation. Even though they call it a full coverage foundation, to me full coverage means full coverage that lasts, okay? And I didn't get that from this product. So I think if I had something shorter, a shorter outing to do, or just like a quick thing I needed to sort of put something light and easy on my face, not as heavy, not as fancy as a full coverage foundation, this would be great for that. If your skin is not as oily as mine, if you have maybe combination skin, this would probably be good for you as well. I love that it has the SPF 40 sunscreen in it. I still always recommend a base sunscreen. I always use my Paula's Choice. It's always linked for you below in my descriptions. But I do think it was overall a good product, but just not something that is going to be my new everyday makeup. Now in terms of product comparison, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that the packaging of this very much reminded me of something else. That is the IT Cosmetics CC Plus uh, Your Skin But Better foundation. I'm not sure if they call it foundation. Actually, I'm going to pull it up here for you guys. Okay, so it's just the Your Skin But Better um, full coverage cream, and this one has SPF 50 in it. I never cared for that product. I thought that it made my face, it, that did give me cake face. I thought it was too thick, I thought it was too heavy. I didn't like how it looked on my skin. It is roughly the same price. The IT Cosmetics product is $39.50. This one is $38 at Nordstrom and I believe they are the same size. So you're getting the same amount of product whichever way you go. You would think that with oily skin I would prefer the heavier um, IT CC Plus. I really don't, I think it doesn't hold up to oil production so much. For my skin, what happens is the oil production makes it cake faster. With the Yensa product, I definitely, as you saw, didn't feel like it was giving me the cake face look, and I think it actually looks a lot more natural on my skin than the IT CC Plus cream did. So that's it, you guys. That is the review for the Yensa BC Foundation. I hope you guys found this useful if you want to give it a try. Everything will be linked down below for you as always. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.